All right, so it is Christmas time in Chicago. It's mid-December and we haven't had any snow yet, but it will come. Um, and during Christmas time on television, there is a movie that is played a lot and it's called It's a Wonderful Life. And um, I actually just saw it again recently for the uh, umpteenth time. I've probably seen it 40 or 50 times uh, in my life. And um, I didn't think I was gonna cry, but I cried at the end. It always gets me, even though you know what's going to happen. Uh, it still, it still got, shed some tears. And I think that that's one of the reasons it's such a powerful movie because of the cathartic, um, because of what the George Bailey goes through. He basically has a, uh, he's reborn. It's, uh, it's a spiritual exper experience that he goes through. And uh, so I became inspired to write down five spiritual lessons that I got from the movie it's a wonderful life and it is a wonderful life uh and life is going on around me there's some construction going around people walking dogs and everything so it's a wonderful life so lesson number one living in the past and the future causes suffering right so this is a big one um we got a train going by so living in the past and the future um so george bailey the the main character oh you should uh oh first of all you should uh if you haven't seen the movie watch it first if you don't want to get spoilers because I'm going to give spoilers um so I mean this is this is the core issue with all of our lives is that we're living in the future an imagined future and uh we're upset about the past right so it's, it's the ego being dissatisfied with what is present, with dissatisfied with what is, right? And it's not like you can't change things, but, um, but there's, there's deep surrendering, there's deep, uh, which I'm gonna get into, there's deep acceptance in the now. So George Bailey, the Jimmy Stewart, the actor, the character is George Bailey, always wanted to, so he had this dream. Uh, uh, also part of this lesson is, is you become identified with uh, somebody that you're going to be. So he always had this dream of traveling, right? He always had this dream of becoming somebody special, becoming somebody important who builds things, right? He talks about building bridges and he, 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 tells, he tells people, even, even in the beginning as a, as a child, he's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna travel. And you know, um, he has a subscription to National Geographic. And even as, as he's older, he's like, I'm going to travel the world and, and, you know, make important things like, you know, bridges and buildings and airports and stuff like that. So that, that is his future, um, self that is, is that haunts the film, right? He's always thinking about living that that dream and if he be, if he does that if he becomes special he's going to be happy right he's going to be at peace 
with himself because he became this special person who traveled and and built things and 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 so forth so that's that's this identification that he has with this um character i wrote i wrote <laughs> these notes down so um so that's what causes him suffering right and so th and then as he gets older and he try he so so one of the dramatic themes of the um movie is, is that he, he keeps trying to get out of bedford falls right he keeps he, you know i'm gonna go to college and uh, you know i'm gonna go travel and you know and he says he literally i wrote i wrote this down i'm gonna wipe the dust off this crummy town and travel i'm gonna wipe wipe the dust off this crummy old town right so and that comes back to haunt him because he's 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 he can't, he can't escape it right um he's not so he's dissatisfied with life you know he has this imaginary idea of this role that he's going to become and he could never fulfill it he's he's he 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 mentions how his dad uh runs this building and loan um company and um he, he george bailey tries to leave and he 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 ends up running it and he and he hates it and he and he even says you know this is a this is a i think he says it's a penny a penny annie you know it's it's like uh it's a nickel and dime stuff right he wants to do more important things and help people get a nice house in his uh in his small town right so we all we all have these i i i i did definitely have ideas that oh i wanted to be special i wanted to be a um you know famous screenwriter or whatever right uh you know that would make that that would make me happy right so that so that's what causes suffering is this idea of living of of having a future um living in this imaginary future right and then it, and then as he as his life goes on and years pass you know he ends up getting married he ends up having children but and he you know and he saves the uh you know he saves this the building and loan a few times and you know his he's constantly clashing with the antagonist the villain of the piece mr potter which i'm going to talk about later so um so in a way he can't escape his karma right uh and then as he gets older he it, that that idea that was planted in him as a youth and as a young man now becomes the past so it's this it's this oh now now it's this burden of the past like oh god i wish i wish i would have done it i wish i would have escaped it so so it's like this this idea becomes now the past it's it's still a, a weird future but it's it not like it goes into the past now right it's like this if i i wish i was the star quarterback or i wish i was this you know person in high school that was that i was better or i i wish i did these things in the past right so and that causes us suffering right um so throughout it he's not in acceptance of the now he's not in acceptance of life where like life is leading him um it's me 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 he's you know it's me 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 even though he acts selfless at time 
essentially it's the core issue with George Bailey is me, 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 I wish I was this um, great builder and this measly little town and um, you know near the end uh, before he before act three when he meets the angel he um, at his house you see models of bridges and buildings things that he still dreams of and he, he in a fit of rage he just like destroys them and goes <laughs> right it's like this dream never happened and and i i need you know eight thousand dollars that uncle billy lost uh or i'm gonna go to you know jail and blah 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 it was interesting because i i i looked up the word bailey for some reason and bailey means fortification right so if you think about whoa yeah <laughs> if you think about it um See, life goes on. It's a wonderful life. And life is going on. If you think about it, we, the e, the ego, <laughs> yes, yes. The ego, um, so fortification, walls around us. So that's what the ego is. The ego puts walls around us, right? And we become hard, we become inflexible. We're not open to life. We're not open to what life wants to bring us on a spiritual level, right? So Bailey is a perfect name for his uh, character. You know, George, the person who has walls around him, fortifications around him. Um, so the ego, means edging God out. So the ego blocks us from our eternal truth. If that's our Buddha nature, right? So how to unblock or dissolve the walls of the ego goes to lesson number two. And lesson number two is Sur surrendered prayer leads to spiritual transformation, right? Surrendered prayer leads to spiritual transformation. leads to enlightenment, right? So, got some more notes down. So, and, and the reason I say surrendered prayer is because, you know, we could have the prayers like, you know, God, I want this, I want this, I want this, and you're really tight, you know, you're really tight. And true, true surrendered prayer is when you, 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 you ask for something, you ask for help, and then you let go, right? You, 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 you allow love, the universe, to do its thing, right? Prayer, prayer, and the train is, is going by. So prayer is an active form 
of spiritual practice. Um, meditation is more passive, right? So, um, and this, this spirituality, this non-dual spirituality can be very dry. And um, in fact, there are some people, some more fundamental, the fundamentalist uh, neo advaitists <laughs> The non-dual fundies who, you know, prayer is is stupid prayer because, you know, you're just praying because all is one and you're just praying to yourself and blah, 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 blah. And uh, I even went through a phase where where um, I was poo-pooing prayer. But prayer can be very powerful. And um, um, I, I, I do use it. Um, and I did use it in, in the beginning where I got on my knees and said, help, help, pray. You know, I was praying for help because I was suffering so much. So, um, so prayer can be very helpful, okay? And the surrendered prayer, where you let go and let God, right? And which means that you you surrender and you know the ego they the ego might want the the answer to the prayer to be this or that this or that but source god love whatever you want to call it your buddha nature knows what's best for you and will guide you with what's perfect. The ego might not like it, but it might, might, it might be the best for you, right? Just like George Bailey, um, the, the ego didn't like getting this guardian angel with no wings, right? Or at first a punch, he got punched by uh, the husband of the teacher that George Bailey was basically uh, tore her a new one on the phone uh, because of their, their kid got cold from school. Anyways, so going back to prayer, the, pr the, the interesting thing is, is that the film opens with prayer, right? It opens with people praying for George Bailey. So it could be very powerful if people... Uh, a lot of people pr pray for somebody or something. It's you're putting this energy, this positive energy or this healing energy out there and it could be very powerful, right? So in a way, all of those prayers in the beginning um, uh, helped lead George to his spiritual awakening, which I'm, I'm calling he had a spiritual awakening. Uh, so it's trust too. So prayer and then you trust. You let go, let God. There's there's great trust. And then trusting you will be sent a guardian angel or guides or guided or you know, life will will help you um along. Um so that pivotal turning point when um so George ate, Uncle Billy absentmindedly left $8,000 in Mr. Potter's lap in a folded newspaper. And uh, this is all on Christmas Eve. Um, and the bank examiner's there and, and blah, blah, blah. And they lost eight, they're short $8,000. And, um, and George is, uh, Realize, you know, George has a life insurance policy, and he realizes, or Mr. Potter says that you're, you're wor worth more dead than alive, and he's in a, um, and Harry Bailey, his his brother, little brother is coming to town, who's a war hero. So all the, all these things are happening all at once. So, um, all these bad things are happening at once, and. George Bailey is in a in a bar in a very famous scene, very well acted scene, um, where he's he's 
says, you know, God, I'm not a uh, praying man much, but I help, you know, basically he's saying help, help me out of this situation. So, um, so prayer is important. And I mean, in one regard, if you, if you, uh, if you, you know, if you had Jimmy Stewart, you know, start meditating instead of praying and meditating and letting go, you know, it, it, it wouldn't have, uh, it wouldn't be much exciting, right? There's not a lot of uh, people who are watching film and even YouTube videos, right? They 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 want they want excitement. They want their mind to be, you know, stimul stimulated and always something going on, right? The silence is is just being peaceful, right? If I just if I just paused and just, you know, meditated here for 20, 30 seconds, there's people out there who, who shut this off and get, what's the next fix? So, uh, imagine, so Jimmy Stewart, Jimmy Stewart, they you know, they don't do many films out there with people meditating, you know? Um, I'm just reading some notes. Um, so he's, he's, he's suffering. He's suffering and he asked for help. So many of us have had our spiritual awakening or got into the spirituality because we're suffering, right? And so the suffering has an important element to it, an important role, right? And I, I love this. Uh, Eckhart Tolle has this line: "You will get what you need for your consciousness to grow." You know, not not winning the when you pray. So basically, when you pray, when you surrender, you will you will get what you need for your consciousness to grow. Not for what you know, not winning the lottery. You know not getting the new new house, not getting what your ego wants, right? You know, so so in the beginning George Bailey got the guardian angel what he needed and and got to see what his life would be like if he didn't exist. He didn't get a check for $8,000. Now at the end and I'm I'm going to get into it, uh I'm going to talk about that later, you know, at the end he did get riches, but um that happened uh, after going through the ordeals. Um, so pr prayer hum humbles you. Just reading some more notes. Um, no self. Be like, in a way, if you could be like a, a prayer, pray and then let go and be like driftwood and just let let God bring for you what you, you what, what you uh, need. Um, So, so prayer, so prayer works. So I, I, I recommend it for those out there. Okay. So lesson number one, life, uh, uh, living in the past and future leads to suffering. Lesson number two, prayer leads to spiritual transformation. And lesson number three is da 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 da. Everyone has a Mr. Potter inside them. Everyone has a Mr. Potter inside them, right? Every, so Mr. Potter represents the shadow, represents the negative aspects of you, right? Of your character, of your inner, you know, your, the unsavory parts of you, right? The, um, the greed, the hatred, the anger, the lust, the depression, addictions, you know, wanting to create enemies, the selfishness, me, you know, me, 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 only for myself. Um, so, 
you must face the Mr. Potter inside you to uh, truly live an integrated spiritual life. You must heal. You must face and heal the Mr. Potter inside you to um, live an integrated life, right? Face the shadow. So the Mr. Potter is the demons, the monsters inside us, right? So face those with unconditional love, unconditional love. And use any other modes of, of you know, energy work, therapy, EMDR, stuff like that. Ener you know, whatever energy work to heal. Heal it so that you could be free, right? Right, you, and don't suppress or repress or indulge in the Mr. Potters, right? Just be aware of them and bring unconditional love. And don't, don't judge other shadows, other people's shadows, because everyone has shadows, right? Everyone has the, the Mr. Potters in us, right? You know, we all like to point fingers at other people, right? Oh, they're, they, they have anger issues, they have anger. And what, you know, there's three fingers pointing back at, at you, right? When you point at other people, you realize, no, it's anger's in me or, or you know, the shadow's in me. Um, and I think it's interesting how, um, in some ways, the, the villain and the, the protagonist and the villain are, are similar or, or one where I love this line where Mr. Potter says, one, you once called me a warped, frustrated old man. Well, George, you are a warped, frustrated young man. I mean, you, you are me because he, because George really hates the building and loan as much as Mr. Potter does. Mr. Potter kind of spends his, you know, the movie trying to get the building and loan, right? And he, and he doesn't get it. Uh, at the end, he thinks he's going to get it. And, uh, but, you know, George hates it too, right? So, and George, in his own way of living in the future and the past and, and not being satisfied with life, not realizing that it is a wonderful life, that he's like Mr. Potter in some ways too, right? And then um, George goes through, I guess what I'm calling a, 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 um, a version of the dark night of the soul, right? When when he realizes that he he's a no thing, nobody, he didn't exist, and so when we when we have the our spiritual awakenings, and as the ego starts to dissolve, it's getting a little colder out here. I should have had a extra layer. Um, he is he is um, He's a, he becomes no thing and he sees what Pottersville is, you know, Potter, and Pottersville, Bedford Falls turns into Pottersville when he, when he, re, when George do, doesn't exist and it's, it's Sin City, right? It's, it's, it's grim and it's dark and there's like strip clubs and bars and gamblings, you know, all the vices, you know, all the, you know, all the, the unsavory parts of us right and um so uh so he goes through a dark night of the soul when he when his ego is dissolving so a lot of us go through a dark night of the soul when we become no, no thing when our ego um sort of goes sort of starts dissolving and it's very painful psychologically and emotionally right and even physically right I mean, so all right so heal the um mr potter in all of us the 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 shadow okay very important to live a to be free right because you could be you could have have had an awakening 
and um, and just stop there and still be triggered all the time and still have be run by the unsavory parts of you, the Mr. Potter of you, you know. And so you're not totally free. You're not tr truly free. All right, so on to lesson number four. Lesson number four is true riches come when you become no self. True riches come when you become no self, when you, when you know your eternal true self, right? True riches. So at the end, when he's um, going through, uh, he goes through the town and Mary, you know, at, at the end when he's back, uh, he's, he prays at the bridge. Clarence, help me, Clarence, help me. So the, the, the angel, I do want to say the angel, his name is Clarence, which means Claire, clarity and bright light, Clarence. Uh, looked that up so I thought that was interesting so um, he he becomes rich they bring in all this money and all the friends c come around him and you know basically save the day so true riches so true riches is not going to be like you know money or anything like that it's true it's it's the fullness of life and it's, be, it's freedom and it's 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 knowing your eternal truth. That's the true riches of life. And it, it's, it's, there's a saying, you experience the peace that passeth understanding um, when you awaken. And I would add, you experience the riches, the richness, the riches of life that passeth understanding because there's the richness of life in this now moment, in all now moments, right? That passes understand, because every, uh, you know, the ego criticizes situations or, or if it just pleases the ego, then that's richness. But no, you see, you see a richness that passes understanding. Um, you experience true riches. I remember the opening of The Power of Now. Eckhart Tolle tells that story of a beggar who's been, who's been sitting on a box for years. And um, somebody said, hey, why don't you open up that box? And he opens up the box. And it, there's all this treasure in there. So it's, it's when you surrender and let go, there, the box is open inside you and you see the treasures that are inside you right they are revealed so i love that um so you trust life. so it it you're reborn right the christmas it happens in christmas which is perfect time uh christmas time you know jesus's birth symbolizes the birth of an awakened being right so George is reborn into an awakened being. Um, so I think that's just perfect. Um, when you're, when you're, I wrote this down, when you're in deep acceptance with life, anchored in your eternal truth, you love life to the point where you even love your antagonists, your enemies, those who previously hurt you you are grateful for them for all the suffering that they caused you so when George is running back and saying Merry Christmas everybody Merry Christmas even the building and loan he says Merry Christmas I love you building and loan he even says Merry Christmas Mr. Potter right he yells at Miss he goes to Mr. Potter's window and he says, Merry Christmas, Mr. Potter. I love, basically, I love you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for everything that you did. You see, that's an awakened, that's an enlightened being. Just even thank you to those who had hurt him, right? Because there's so much love for them now because you, you, you are at a different level of consciousness. 
I just think that scene is just so perfect. Thank you for your existence, right? Your, your, you, the suffering that you caused me, Mr. Potter, helped me awaken. If it wasn't for you, I, you know, I wouldn't have had this guardian angel come. I wouldn't have prayed, you know, stuff like that. So I just think that's perfect. At the end, there are two key songs that they sing. One is Old, La Old Lang Syne. Uh, when old acquaintance be forgot. Da 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 da. <laughs> Let old acquaintance for Old Lang Syne, right? It's basically we're giving a, we're toasting the past. The, 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 it's over. The past is gone, you know? We're toasting to it and we're, we're looking forward to the what's new, right? So, and then what's new is the, the second song they, they sing, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Hark the Herald Angels Sing, glory to the newborn king, glory to be. We're singing for your rebirth. So, so out with the ego past, Old Lang Syne, and Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Okay. They actually sing it in reverse order, but but I just think those two are perfect. Um, and then at the end, even so, even when you awaken, not only in this 3D reality, rich is you 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 make important, you change the vibrations, even in 5D or different D, I don't know, whatever. But remember at the end where the bell rings and the kid, the kid Zuzu says, teacher says, when a bell rings, an angel get its wings, right? So, so Clarence got his wings. So, you know, as you awaken, who knows what else? <laughs> That's what I got out of it. Who knows what else on other planes of existence that you're affecting, right? In a positive way. All right. So, those are the four. Five is coming up, but I have some fun observations that I got. Uh, some some tidbits. One is the production company, you see it in the beginning, is called Liberty Films. So it was Frank Capra's independent production company. I think he, I think he ended up losing money on this um, film. It wasn't very popular when it came out. Um, but liberty, liberty means freedom. So being an awakened being, when you awaken, you, you, you become free, right? I just thought that's perfect. Um, Uncle Billy's string. So number two, Uncle Billy's string. You remember, you know, he, he's, he forget that's a plot point. You know, how did this guy forget eight that, you know, misplace $8,000. Okay. And then we, we buy it because he's absent minded, but having the the string around his finger to help him remember things. I think it's a good spiritual practice because it could help you, you know, anything to help you remember to breathe, to, if, if you're getting triggered, help you to take a deep breath or, you know, meditate, you know, help, you know, help you to meditate, remember to meditate. So it's just a remembering thing. I think it's kind of interesting. So the two main women in the movie is Mary, the wife, and Violet. So I just thought archetype, they were sort of like the Madonna and horror archetype, you know, uh, the good girl and the bad girl. I just thought that they were interesting. And Violet is redeemed at the end. So the, the horror is redeemed at the end. Remember, she comes back and she gives money. She was going to go to New York to, you know, whatever. But, um, she came back. She was redeemed. I thought that was interesting. Number four, there's a lot of baptisms. There's a lot of like plunging in the water motifs in this film. You know, in the beginning, George saves his brother uh, as kids for going into the water. You know, he jumps in the water to save him. George and Mary fall into the pool underneath the high school gym. You know, on their first like date, if you want to call it that. Uh, so they sort of get baptized and then George the, th the third one and George saves um, Clarence jumps in the water, right? So that's uh, 
that's another baptism. So I thought that, that these were interesting motifs. Um, one thing I noticed uh, was the small skull, human skull ornament on Mr. Potter's desk at one, one time. And I thought that was interesting because it's like death. It's like anti-life. So that's a good production design that I never saw before until recently. Um, last few days ago when I watched it. And the last one, a look, the, remember the lasso of the moon, Mary, Mary, <laughs> Jimmy Stewart, uh, uh, imitations. Well, 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 Mar well Mary, Mary, I'll, I'll, I'll get you the moon. I'll get you the moon. It's, I'm doing a really bad one. I know. But when he talks about eating the moon and then having the light come out of your hair and your finger, fingertips I thought was very cool because that's sort of like light that's sort of like what happened to him at the end is that he he ended up becoming light right when you awaken you become light metaphorically and you, sh you shine you shine so so those are some fun observations that I got um all right and lesson number five da 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 so we're going to use It's a Wonderful Life as a mantra, as a meditation, a walking meditation if you want to. But try it out. Just try saying It's a Wonderful Life. It's a Wonderful Life. And if you're, if, if you're really suffering, uh, I don't want you to do, maybe don't do it. Wait until, you, you know, pain bodies are gone. Because uh, I don't want you to repress or, you know, fake anything. But but just start realizing and saying, it's a wonderful life. Or, life, there's a dog going by me. <laughs> See, it's a wonderful life. You never know what you're going to get. Uh, life is wonderful. You could say, life is wonderful. Life is beautiful. Right? Say, I have deep in deep acceptance in this wonder uh, of this wonderful life right um and then you want to wish it you want to turn it around to others you want to say others I, I you have a wonderful life or i want you to experience a wonderful life i want you to not have suffering right and it turns into a gratitude that this is a wonderful life. I didn't, I didn't, I hated this life. This was not a wonderful life for me. Okay, I will say that. I was suicidal. I was, you know, this life suck, blah, blah, blah. And, and until I had my spiritual awakening. And then, and then even after, uh, you know, especially in the af immediate aftermath. But then even, uh, you know, a few years you know, I, there were times where I was like, this life sucks. Even the spiritual awakening is good, but life sucks, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it took me a while to really be like, yes, this is a wonderful life. It's a beautiful life. It's beautiful. Thank you for life. So because you become grateful, naturally grateful. So you could turn it around to a gratitude mantra which I love doing is thank, thanking existence. Thank you for, for bringing me here in life and thanking source God and, and thanking others for sharing this existence, right? Right, your, your life has meaning. And I think that this is, that's one of the, obviously the um, themes of the movie is, is your life has meaning and it's a wonderful life and you're important. Uh, as George Bailey discovered that he's like, oh, I wish I was never born. And, and, and uh, maybe that's a sixth lesson. <laughs> oh, well, but you, your, your life matters and your it's important because we're all interconnected. Right. And that's one of the gifts that he learned was that his life mattered because when he found out that what life would be without him, he, he, he saw a, uh, a grimmer reality, a, a darker reality, right? And um, so we all have important gifts to give to this world, right? So your life matters. So um, 
yeah so 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 thank you for life thank you out there for your life and it's a wonderful life and thank you for watching so and that's it so hope this has helped and it's getting cold out i'm gonna go, go back inside and it's a wonderful life and um go see the movie if uh, if you haven't seen it yet and uh, or if you've seen it see it again and uh but love you so much it's a wonderful life and until we meet again next time in this wonderful now moment.